Hi. In this video, we'll use the AWG's import feature to load a data file created using another application program into the waveform generator. That data is then interpreted by the waveform generator as a series of points which define a waveform, and we can use the data just as we would any other waveform. In this project, we'll create a file using Notepad and import the file into the waveform generator. When we use the data to frequency modulate a sinusoid and play the result of our speaker, we should hear something that sounds, at least vaguely, like musical scales. There are lots of rules and details associated with actual musical scales. So, as engineers, we're going to overly simplify things. We'll be happy if we can just create a set of tones whose frequency increases by steps over some time period. The process we'll use is simply frequency modulation. If you recall from the third AWG tutorial project, frequency modulation corresponds to changing the frequency of one signal, the carrier wave, according to the amplitude of a second signal, the baseband signal. So if we want to increase our frequency in steps, we just create a baseband signal whose amplitude increases in steps. Unfortunately, this signal isn't available as a standard signal on our waveform generator. On a positive note, however, this signal is easy to create in Notepad and then import into the AWG. The waveform generator can read data in the form of text data, which is usually saved in files with a .txt extension, and comma-separated variable data, usually in files with a .csv extension. The baseband signal we want is very easily created as text data using Notepad. We just create a file containing the levels that we want. For example, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, and import the data into the waveform generator. The waveform generator will spread these points out evenly over some time range, which is set by an internal buffer. What we get out is the baseband signal shape we showed on our previous slide. As in the last few introductory AWG projects, we're creating an audio signal that we want to listen to. The circuit we'll use then is the same one as was used in the second, third, and fourth AWG projects. It's simply a speaker connected to channel one of the AWG. Also as before, I'll be using a set of speakers connected to the headphone jack on the analog discovery to play back my signals. The first thing we need to do, of course, is create our text file. I've opened Notepad, and I'll type the numbers one, two, three, four, five, and six on successive lines in the file. Now, I'll save the file somewhere where I can find it later. I'll name the file stairs. And now it's saved. We've already imported WAV files into the function generator. Importing text and .csv files is very similar. Since we want to use this stair step like data as a bandpass signal for frequency modulation, click on the Advanced tab to get to the FM signal options. Click on the Signal Selection button in the FM column. Importing data is a custom option, so click on Custom, then click on Open File. Browse to the location where the data is saved and open the file. There are our stair steps. It looks exactly the way we want to do it. Click on Open to open the file. Now let's create a frequency modulated signal using this data. Let's set up our carrier wave to be a sinusoid with a frequency of 200 hertz. We'll set the carrier amplitude to, for example, 5 volts. Now under the FM column, set the baseband frequency to something low, say 500 millihertz, or a half a cycle per second. That means our scales will play over the course of two seconds. Also, set the FM amplitude index to 100%. Make sure you deselect amplitude modulation. Now just click on Run AWG1 to hear your scales.